Inline City volunteers mobilize team to distribute supplies and calm the anxious minds of all that's affected. Canada City volunteers help package meal bags that will be airlifted to Syria for the refugee families. Welcome to Headlines, I'm Laurie Chen, thank you for joining us. In Taiwan, an express train derailed in Inline County on October 21st, taking away the lives of 18 people and injuring at least 186 others. In the aftermath of this terrible incident, Inline City volunteers mobilized the whole area to provide supplies and to support the search and rescue teams. Besides sincerely chanting for the deceased, they also helped calm the anxious minds of the survivors and their families. Meanwhile, the volunteers have also set up a service station at the nearby Xingma train station, providing hot meals and eco-friendly blankets to the stranded passengers. At the accident site in Suao, 18 families have lost their loved ones. As the cold breeze blew in the night, only the Buddhist chanting could be heard. As the Suao branch of the Taipei Veterans General Hospital aren't able to handle some of the more severely injured patients, they have been sent to Luodong Bo Ai Hospital, or St. Mary's Hospital in Luodong. We're staying here since we heard that some of the remains of the deceased will be sent here. Laying quotes down, the volunteers hope they help the deceased find a temporary place to rest in peace. For the entire night, ambulances have been sending injured passengers here. City volunteers are continuously providing care and comfort. Meanwhile, many volunteers line up outside the hospital to chant for the deceased. Amidst the Buddhist chanting, the volunteers pray that the casualties can rest in peace. City volunteers also provided the supplies to support the search and rescue teams while calming the minds of the anxious passengers. They comforted the families of the deceased, helping them cope with the pain of great loss. If there's any way we can help you, our service station is right over there. City volunteers in Yilan immediately mobilized a disaster relief team to care for this disastrous incident. The entire team needs to be mobilized. Please ask them to assemble all other available members at home. Taking appropriate measures in times of emergency, the volunteers also need to comfort the anxious passengers. Some students from Bay Nine Junior High School are over there and they are quite anxious. Let's bring some food over there to comfort them. As the injured passengers cope with their pain, Dama masters from the Jingsi abode came to calm their minds with gentle words. The big sister in the white uniform, the nurses, will take good care of you. There's no need to be afraid, okay? Now that you are at the hospital, put your mind at ease. Doctors and nurses are here to care for you, so do not worry anymore. This night has been extremely long. The comforting words and unconditional giving from the volunteers can calm the minds of the injured passengers. Last month, Hurricane Florence hit the Carolinas in the U.S. City volunteers continued to investigate the disaster. The local pastor drove the volunteers around to inspect the most affected communities. The residents almost lost everything. The volunteers carefully looked for suitable future distribution sites together. Global warming has become a super generator for all storms, increases the power and the damages caused by it. It's even greater in scale. All of these were flooded. Every wow. one of these were flooded. This is what all of this looked like right. a week ago. Yeah. Look in there. A North Carolina pastor took city volunteers to look at the aftermath of the disaster. The beautiful scenery from before are now all in ruins. Now we are here at one of the most hardest hit areas. This place is filled with discarded damaged furniture and insulation materials. 
The water reached about this high in height. Due to the heavy flooding, the water did not recede until two weeks later. So pretty much everything was ruined in the process. The Bible says that a, a rope of three strands mm -hmm. is stronger than a rope right. of one That's strand. Right. We're the three strands. We're right. working together. We find what we have in common and how we can work together to help people. Youth volunteers from the local church were able to help the affected residents dismantle the insulated walled materials that were soaked in the water. They will wait for it to dry completely before renovation can be started. Tsuji volunteers also went to the Disaster Recovery Center to obtain a detailed map of the disaster zone in order to accurately locate the hardest hit areas. In mid-September, Typhoon Mankut ravaged through the Philippines, causing much damage all around. The Begal District Hospital, which protects the health of many remote area populations, was seriously damaged, including the ceiling, wards, delivery room, and even the operation room were no exception. When it rains, the hospital beds must be moved to the main hall and corridor to avoid the leakage. City volunteers plan to provide repair assistance as soon as possible. Many expected mothers gather at the entrance of the Bangal District Hospital for free prenatal examinations. Taifu Mankut had caused many equipment damages in the hospital, and many spaces remain unusable. This place used to be their main waiting area, but now it's not functioning as such due to damages and other parts of the hospital. The roof is in bad shape, so at the present moment, many of the hospital beds are moved here temporarily. This hospital is the only medical institution in all 48 local towns serving in remote areas. After the typhoon, the number of patients has increased, forcing doctors to work overtime, causing great stress and affecting overall medical quality. There are always a lot of patients with a shortage of medical staff. Sometimes we're forced to transfer patients to another hospital. The other hospitals are quite far away, so at times before the patient can even reach the other hospital, they've already passed away. It's really heartbreaking to witness because after all, whether it's the operating room, x-ray imaging room, delivery room, or even just a normal ward, many are unusable at the moment. The continuous heavy rainfall just keeps on seeping through the damaged roof. Many of the equipment are still in good condition, so it's important that we find a solution to fix the roof. This way, the hospital can go back to serving more local patients in need. The local volunteers assess the damages and will provide repair assistance to the hospital. This way, it can quickly go back to safeguarding the health of the local population. It's been over three weeks since the devastating Indonesia earthquake. Indonesia's Tsuji volunteers continue to care for those all were affected. The aid provided by Tsuji volunteers included medical services, tents, sleeping mats, eco-friendly blankets, and instant noodles and rice. Three weeks after the earthquake and some sections of road have yet to be cleared of debris as reconstruction of this area has been delayed. I really hope that the affected villagers in Dongara and Palu can begin to cheer up and stand up again. I feel very distressed and though I'm not healthy, I still came here because of my inner calling. When I saw the state of the church, it really hurt me. Tsuji Indonesia chapter provided supplies to villages such as Batu Suya Go and Oti. Aid included generators, tents, sleeping mats and rice. From what I saw in the resettlement area, it must be very cold at night. And when the rainy season begins, they will need salons and blankets. Tima also provided health checkups and medical consultation. The villages that volunteers visited were all recipients of government relief, and this was the first time an NGO had visited them. Jingsu noodles and rice were prepared according to local taste as this hot food helped affected residents gain strength. Those preparing the food were singing and enjoying the preparation. We feel very happy because the love we bring them makes them feel very happy. This also means that our charitable visit has not been wasted. In the end, the spirit of Zuji family was expressed through the sign language song and dancing by locals in Sigi Lodu village. 
Staying in Indonesia, a Balu cafe owner began to provide free coffee to both volunteers and earthquake survivors. He himself was unharmed during the disaster, so he wanted to give back to those who are in need. Having time for a cup of coffee is a rare opportunity for those living in disaster areas. Both volunteers and survivors cherish the opportunity to stop and sip some coffee. It's also a good opportunity to exchange some information. We get together here and share stories about what we have experienced. At least we feel happy because we can come together while having coffee. After the earthquake, the owner of this cafe, Sabda, decided to provide free coffee to everyone and invited them to come and sit and chat. By sharing their tsunami and earthquake experience, they are learning to cherish this moment. I want to let everyone know that there are still many beautiful things in the city. This is despite the fact that it has been badly damaged. The owner of this cafe is a university professor. When the tsunami happened, he was in a tall building and was able to witness it in safety. He wanted to do more to help others, and he hopes that his cafe can provide support to the survivors. We share information with each other. If anyone needs help, they can come here and tell others about their trouble. At the least, customers who come here won't feel alone. Mutual support and companionship can be an important force to help the community heal. Canada SUG volunteers supported the Global Medic Organization by packaging meal bags which will be airlifted to Syria for refugees. The content designer of the food package is a Syrian chef who once lived in a refugee camp. He has extensive knowledge and insight into knowing what refugee families go through in the camps. Therefore, he came up with the meal bags to provide food that suits their preferences. To put together the meal and get it to the packaging mission is for Syrian refugees. We know Syrians would like, and they said, you know, when we lived in the camps, the food was terrible. So they designed a meal that's with uh, green lentils and bulgur and onion. You're smelling the onion. It's quite, it's quite great. And they said it's mujadara. And now what you're doing is you're going to put it back together in dry food in bags, and at the end, the, the meal will end up in a bag into these boxes, and then we put it into, into Syria to many of these families that have been affected by the war. The Global Medic designed meal bags, each containing bulgur, salt, and onion crisps. The volunteers all work together to accurately measure each ingredient. This is lentil beans, so we bag it into a cup like this size, and there's many more like other stuff to go in the bag to ship out. Since lentils need more time to cook, they are packed separately. I feel like being a part of doing good deeds is a wonderful thing. Just coming here, it's exciting. Just working with Suchi and other volunteers here um, to pack for Syria, which is such uh, for a worthy cause. Every process is packed with the volunteers' love, airlifting the goods to Syria, filled with the motivation to continue on. It's already been two years since the devastating earthquake hit Ecuador. Tsuji volunteers have never left the residence in Kanoa and are still going full force in the long-term planning process. The reconstruction of the community church is underway, with housings for both the nuns and priests expected to be completed by the end of this month. This really gives the residents a sense of hope and happiness. Before the town was completely different, there used to be motels, we used to have tourists, now we don't. When I fell, it felt like I was falling in a dream. I was underneath two chairs, like these under the rubble. I was yelling for my family to see if they escaped or not. I was there for 20 hours. At noon they took me out and I thought all my family survived, but they didn't. After they rescued me, they found my family around 6 or 7. They all died. That's how it is, my friend. God is powerful.
working on reconstructing the church. When you guys were here last, we only had the foundation. We have to remove all the rubble so we can rebuild. We're trying to work together with the community. Canoa is currently struggling. There are no jobs here. People are either fishing, working in construction, or are teachers' assistants. Nobody has ingrained the importance of education here. We have to teach them why it is important to be a working professional. But kids leave their homes at an early age. It's difficult because my daughter got pregnant at the age of 13. We have to work so we can give them a better life. She's no longer continuing her studies because she felt bad about getting pregnant. She stopped going to school. You can see the change. People here are a lot more grateful because they feel like life is finally moving on. Once a church is rebuilt, which is vital for our community, and they can start going to church, I think that people are going to start feeling better. This is going to restore a wonderful sense of hope and happiness. We'll have somewhere to visit, and that will bring joy to everyone. We need this church. Shi Kai Ten is a third year university student. His father suffers from cancer and the medical bills have been a burden on the family. To contribute, he does part time work and has earned scholarships to help the family get by. He's very grateful for the love and care from Siji volunteers and especially thankful for Dharma Master Zhen Yen. That's why, to express his gratitude, he recently sent a drawing to the Jingzi abode. Shu Kai Ten's father is battling terminal illness as he's getting thinner and thinner. If Kai Cheng has time, he likes to accompany his father. This area hasn't fully recovered, so the skin will become thinner. My fingers don't have any strength. More than a year ago, Kai Cheng's father became sick, severely impacting the finances of the family. Such volunteers began to care for his father and provide assistance to the family. Kai Cheng was so dedicated to his father, they considered dropping out of school. After his father became sick, the family's finances were affected, and the mother has to care for the father. He planned to take a break from school, but after communicating with his parents, his mother said that you must take care for yourself first. He worked part-time, working in the morning and attending classes at night. My home situation is not very good. I think it's also necessary for me to work and study. I should work part-time for my living expense and use my personal achievements to pay for my tuition fees. When volunteers have time, they'll come to see them and give them encouragement. Each and every harsh crisis has been averted. The Buddha will help once you first calm the pound and have no fear. I'm very grateful to all of you. Kai Cheng's grandma used to spend all day at home and was quite sad. Volunteers took her out of the house to do recycling. Her mood dramatically improved. I don't want to be a worry to others. I don't want to think about things. Since Kai Chong was a child, he loved to paint as a way for him to forget his troubles. Recently, this painting was presented as a gift of gratitude to Master Zheng Yan. With confidence, perseverance, and courage, there is nothing in this world that cannot be accomplished. Nothing is impossible. There is nothing we can't do without hard work. In China, a TGK recipient got into a car accident back in July and was in critical conditions. Upon learning of the news, TG volunteers started to accompany him and have helped him apply for emergency financial aid. With the encouragement of the volunteers, this care recipient has gone through rehabilitation and can now finally sit up on his own without much help from the crutches. <laughs> Seeing how Wang Shuangyang is playing the guitar, one can hardly imagine that his life was once in critical conditions due to a car accident in July. After the volunteer Han Dongshuang accompanied Wang to undergo rehabilitation exercises at home, he can finally now walk without using crutches. Uncle Han really cares about me. He kept teaching me various rehabilitation exercises so that I won't suffer from multiple side effects. I'm very grateful to Uncle Han, really. 
City volunteer's heart goes out to Wang, whose legs are extremely thin. They have brought sweaters for him and told him city stories. Wang has been deeply touched and has made vows to pay the love forward. I am really glad today because Suanya has said that he will also become someone who gives and helps other people in need. When the volunteers took off, Wang walked forward with his crutches to wave goodbye to everyone. He also promised that before their next gathering, he will work hard on his rehabilitation exercises. Suji's Kaohsiung Foreign Language Team has been established for 12 years now. Their duties include providing guided tours to foreigners and spreading Suji's principles in different languages. Members even teach English conversation lessons to Suji team staff at the Kaohsiung Jingsi Hall. I mean, romantic dinner with your husband. This is Kaohsiung Jingsi Hall. No, we won't go out to eat dinner. He will give me a gift. Many city staff members come early in the morning to join an English conversation class. My English might not be very fluent, but if I can understand what the foreigners are saying, I can provide the needed service. The English conversation class teachers are city foreign language team members in Kaohsiung. Some foreigners come visit this place, with some of them even making donations. If the staff members know basic English, then they can interact with the foreigners. You can join the volunteering work. Besides teaching English conversation, foreign language team members also invite a foreign teacher to give them lessons. When I feel that I am lacking something, I will take out what I learned in class and feel nourished again. It's quite high level, so they are diligent in their research and they read the material before class and are well prepared to ask questions. The members of foreign language team are of all ages. While this 80-some-year-old volunteer is a student in class, so is this 16-year-old high school student. I can hear the opinions of people of all ages and learn from their life experiences. Joining foreign language team can inspire your interest in things. Once you feel interested, you can become very creative. Kaohsiung Foreign Language Team, which has been established for 12 years, is growing strong. Besides receiving foreign guests, its members also spread such as principles in different languages. Globally, the 125th Jingzi Books and Cafe has officially opened in Hangzhou, China. This is considered one of the most interesting historical and cultural scenes in Hangzhou. The opening ceremony recently took place, and nearly 100 guests from all walks of life came to celebrate the festive occasion with the Suji volunteers. Let's check out this monumental moment together. Thank you for watching. See you next time.